This talk was called Tomorrow's World and is actually a completely different talk than I had written at the start of the week. Um, the, the original plan was to come in here and say things in English and have bad Italian translations on the screen saying such jokes as network connectivity error and could not translate. And yesterday I heard that we have our own UN translators and that completely ruined the fucking joke. <laughs> so instead, we have this one slide the whole way through, it's just a picture of me and that way we have no words to translate. That's <laughs> it. Um, the original talk that I wanted to give to you guys was based on an article that Rowan had tweeted out about two months ago. Uh, it was in uh, The Atlantic talking about um, the change in technology, about how we're moving from a mechanical world to a software driven world. How it's going to be harder and harder for people to get things fixed because we can no longer physically see where something is broken. And this kind of got me thinking a little bit. While I was reading the article, I was being driven down the motorway by my partner. And uh, for any of you that, that don't know her, she's about this height, and she drives a big estate car. It's scary as hell. But this new car has a steering wheel on it with cruise control. It's the first time I've ever been in a car with cruise control. Uh, and you change the speed of the car by flicking a little button up or down. And I realized as I was sitting, at, you know, watching her play Mario Kart, that she was not touching the pedals at all, and not just because she's tiny, but because she had basically turned the steering wheel and this entire big car into a little Super NES controller. And she was driving like this. And that really kind of got to me about the change in technology and how we view things. And that was the original point of this talk. In practicing it, though, I realized that it was very much this guy. It was Consulting Kev, the one that pays for the mortgage, and not the kind of Kev I like to be with you guys. I realized it was a very formal talk, and I kind of want to do something slightly different with you guys, because I think I've already pissed enough people off with my Joomla Day UK talk. And um, for our Italian friends in the room, um, if you've not seen that, you know, I, I genuinely think it's worth 20 minutes of your time just so you can actually hear the moment when uh, people get offended. There's like an audible thing in the room. It's fantastic. But, but I think it's a good, good lead into this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a bad joke I realize I've missed about just being an ordinary fellow on a stage with his own UN translator. But, so the reason I want to talk to you guys, uh, just me, not consulting Kev, is that I think there is a massive, massive opportunity in the CMS market in the next five years. Because I don't think that you guys, not just Joomla, WordPress and Drupal and Adobe CQ or AM, whatever it's called now, I don't think you guys really know the market you're in. And I think that because the market you have been in for 10 years has been the creation of websites, fairly basic websites. And websites for the most part haven't changed in 20 years. The web, for the most part, hasn't changed in 20 years. That, in my opinion, is going to fundamentally transform in the next five. So let's start with what market you're in. What do users want? Can anyone tell me, and this is just to make sure people are awake, can anyone tell me what your users want in a content management system? Something. Shout out. Clairvoyant answers. What, sorry? Clairvoyant. Clairvoyant answers. That's actually a fantastic answer. And we'll look around to that. So let's do it this way. What is Joomla's biggest strength? Community. Community. Okay, cool. I can't sell that to a client. But, that, but that's true. That is Joomla's amazing strength. So from a technical point of view, what is it? 
Website updates, that's awesome. And, and extensibility, that's awesome too. Oh, there's too many, I'm really sorry. Multi-language, that is an awesome one. I like that a lot. What's Joomla's biggest weakness as a CMS? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I love that that got way more answers. Right, that's awesome. <laughs> but it's great. It's great that we're able to, as a community, right, turn around and say, we know what we have as strengths. We know we have some weaknesses. That's okay. In my opinion, over the last five years, a lot of the CMSs across the board, and not just the big ones, have all started to do roughly the same thing. There's no real difference between them. I know there are some small differences, but the bigger ones have become somewhat homogenized. People are focusing on their weaknesses to try and bring them up instead of doubling down on their strengths. The big thing for me uh, that I promote Joomla is when people tell me they're worried about security and they're worried about multilingual. But if I go to the Joomla.org website, what I want to see is a big banner along the top that says, we're awesome at security and multilingual. We're maybe shit at some other stuff. Because that's what people want to hear. They want to hear what your strengths are. Because, like Duke said, users kind of don't know what they want till they see it. And I think we've all had clients like that. Let me tell you a story about Campbell Soup. Campbell Soup actually made a lot of money from their pasta sauce called Prego, which I, I, I just realized is an Italian word, so you guys don't need that translated. They hired a marketing consultant at the start of the 80s called Howard Moskowitz. And Howard Moskowitz was tasked with finding out why no one was buying Prego sauce, but everyone was buying ragu sauce. Campbell Soup held um, focus groups throughout the year, and everyone said, yeah, we really like the sauce, we really like it, but no one bought it. So what Howard did was, he had 36 different sauces made, and he went around America asking people to taste the sauces. And although people said which one they liked, people fell into three groups. They had traditional sauce, they had meaty sauce, and they had chunky sauce. Turns out that no one had ever said in a focus group that they wanted chunky sauce because no one had ever specifically asked them, do you want chunky sauce? They had always asked them, do you like what is in front of you? And people said, yeah, I like it, give me free sauce. Completely changed the way that Campbell's thought about how they interacted with users. They released Prego sauce, which was chunky, and it cornered the market within a year. Campbell's made an extra $600 million from Prego chunky sauce in the 80s alone. The point of this is, users don't know what they want. And if you ask them what you want, they will tell you what they already have. Henry Ford said it best when he said, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. The reality is though that a faster horse is what they wanted, but the outcome, the output that they wanted was the ability to go from A to B faster. The next question I have is, how many people here have uh, teenagers in their house? I, I, I do now and it's new to me and it's, it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening. So my, my big thing that, that, that kind of makes me laugh is just the sheer amount of time that both teenagers, boy and girl, in my house spend pretending to be a fucking dog on Snapchat. If you'd have asked people what the single biggest feature they wanted in a phone five years ago, it would have been better texting, it would have been group chat, it would have been any myriad of things. But the number one app 
last year on the App Store was Snapchat. Users don't know what they want if you, uh, when you ask them. The change for me in technology is the most interesting thing. Um, how many people here still has a desktop computer? Okay, about half. That's awesome. How many people had a desktop computer 10 years ago but now don't? Okay, cool. How many people have gotten rid of their laptop and are on iPad Pro, Surface, Lenovo? Okay, slightly less. But we're moving that way. If 15 years ago I'd have said, by the way, I'm not going to have a desktop anymore, people would have laughed. If five years ago I said, by the way, I'm, I'm never buying another laptop again, people would have laughed. But we have moved more and more, not just into the mobile space, but we're moving away from the traditional software and hardware. The iPhone is only 10 years old. The smartphone is a remote control for our life. I understand that we get that. I understand that from a CMS point of view, we have already embraced mobile. But it's not just about that. We are the first generation to see a contextual shift in technology from end to end. No other generation of humans have seen a, a contextual shift. They've, they've always been in it. That it represents massive, massive opportunity for us. There's a, an Eric Myers quote that says, context is for kings. And the latest Star Trek, which is all right, uh, had an episode there two weeks ago which just said, context is for kings. We are the first generation and the first people with the ability to see the context. And that is fantastic because the change in the web is coming. Over the last 20 years, for the most part, the web was just text with some images. But the percentage of images is growing. The percentage of video on the web is growing. The percentage of voice and audio on the web is growing. And that, to me, is a fundamental change for this simple reason. What does the C in CMS stand for? Content, cool. How do you guys define content in Joomla? What well, dimension? Okay, that's an interesting one. Because here's one thing. So, the amount of audio content on the web is on the way up in comparison to text. Great. Does Joomla edit audio? No. That's okay. None of the other big CMSs do. Does it edit video? No. Does it edit images? Yes. Yeah, crop. Okay, that's cool. But if video and audio are on the rise, and they're the mainstay of content going forward, what does that make a content management system that doesn't manage the growth of content? And that's not just one Joomla, by the way. That's, that's all the content management systems. Because there's a really, really scary thing that's about to happen. In five years, and I actually think about three, but I'm going to try and not scare people like I did in London. A content management system that just manages text and some images is just an SEO engine. It's not going to be the go-to for building websites and building applications and building data. You're just going to be there for SEO. And I don't want that for you guys. I don't want that for the content management market. Not just Joomla. I think the change with voice is coming. And I think it's going to fundamentally hit this market incredibly hard. Voice is key in the next five years because voice gives context. There is a change coming from an active web to a passive web. Just now, if you want to do something on the internet, you actually have to stop what you're currently doing and do it. If you want to take 
a photo where you have dog ears. You have to stop what you're doing. If you want to read the BBC website, you have to go to the website. It's an active thing to do. With voice, that's gone. It's a passive thing to do. I can say, Alexa, what is the headlines while I'm driving? I can say, Alexa, text my mum, you know, stop calling me, I'm driving. How people use the web is fundamentally going to shift in the next five years. There's a reason that every company in the tech world, from Google to Apple, even though the Apple one is terrible, are pumping out these home systems that are voice activated. The content management system of the future is not going to be based around text. It's not going to be based around dragging a mouse. It's going to be, Alexa, read me that last paragraph. Okay, make that last sentence a pool quote. If your content management system is based around the idea of people on a desktop with a mouse selecting something in tiny MCE and going click to pull quote, that's awesome. That's a dinosaur. Voice, AR, uh, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, these things are all coming to a certain extent. Right? I think AR is very far away. I think VR is, from a consumer point of view, is super far away, much further away than a lot of the technologists want us to believe. But with the rise of these things, with the moving away from the physical, with the moving away from the desktop, more and more devices that will be coming out are outside of our current thinking. It's not an iteration. The Alexa home speaker is not an iteration on the mouse. It's an innovation on the next thing. The light bulb, which are blinding me right now. <laughs> These light bulbs are not an iteration on a candle. Each leap forward that we make comes as a surprise to people. And I don't really want that to surprise you guys. I don't want that to surprise the content management market. <laughs> the CMS market is going to fundamentally change in the next five years. What path are you guys on? What path is Joomla on? WordPress chose its path. For, for better or worse, they, they, they saw the writing on the wall and they are going for that Wix, Squarespace, um, the ability to make websites really, really quickly and go for a page builder, that's, that's their market. They've seen it. They're doubling down on that. In my opinion, Gutenberg is really, really awful just now. But Matt is a fantastic product guy and they will get that right eventually. But they have chosen their market and they're doubling down on it. Drupal has chosen their market. Drupal have gone for the enterprise. They've gone for the governments. They've gone for a smaller niche market, but they know that, that market's going to be around for 10 to 15 years. Drupal is effectively Christmas CDs. It'll be around forever. Although, and that's okay, because that's, what they, that's their plan. What I don't know for you guys, and part of the reason that this is I wanted to do this slightly different talk, is I don't know what your vision for Joomla is. I think 4 is looking fantastic. I think the installer is such an improvement. There's so many good things about it. I love that you guys are thinking about Joomla X as well. You realize that what you need to get out soon is not where you need to go in the future. That's awesome. It really is. But I don't know what your vision is. And I'm concerned, not just for you guys, but I'm concerned for what I see in the CMS market. The vision for the next two years, the vision for the next three years is a slightly different version of what we've got just now. And I think that's going to bite someone in the ass. Who's your target audience? What's your why? What's your unique selling point? 
If it's multilingual, and I think that's an awesome one, let's start promoting that. Let's put that on the Joomla website right at the top in a big, ugly banner. Jerry Seinfeld had a quote. Well, I'm going to kind of end on. He says, it's better to be giving the eulogy than to be in the coffin. I don't think the CMS market is dead at all. I don't think that Joomla is in trouble just now. I don't think that WordPress is in trouble just now, or Drupal, or Concrete 5, or Expression Engine. But I do think that the change is coming. And what I want from you guys is during the afternoon sessions, during the Joomla and action sessions, during the marketing sessions, is to talk about the why, talk about your strength, start promoting it more. That's what I want from you guys, because I want to still be doing this in five years and not just phoning it in from Alexa. Thank you very much.